Welcome to the show. I'm Jason Whitlock, and I'll tell you why Case Keenum will outshine Drew Brees this weekend. And I'm Colin Coward, and I'll tell you why everybody needs to calm down about the Cavs' buzzer beater loss last <laughs> night. Speak no. for yourself starts now. You that was a to LeBron. He that, needs to calm. Down. Go either way. Three minutes in. <laughs> go either way, gay. All right. Hello and welcome. We're joined today by a couple Super Bowl champs, Ray Lewis and Greg Jennings. Let's start in Pittsburgh, where Big Ben will be seeking some redemption in Sunday's divisional round matchup against the Jaguars. The last time these teams met, Ben threw five interceptions and openly questioned his own abilities. But he's not the only one with something to prove. Head coach Mike Tomlin has been dealing with locker room drama all season, including Le'Veon Bell threatening to retire yesterday if he gets franchise tagged again. Cowherd, who's under more pressure Big Ben or Mike Tomlin? Always blame the teacher, not the student. Whose classroom is it? Mike Tomlin. Lavian Bell talking about salary, Facebook Live, Todd Haley issue. Listen, I know what Big Ben is. He won a Super Bowl with Cower. He won a Super Bowl with Tomlin. First ballot Hall of Famer. Kind of a goofball when he came in the league, immature. He's great. Tomlin, this culture, I've been banging on it for two years. And I, by the way, I go out of my way to support coaches. I don't think you should fire Hugh Jackson. I've been supporting Marvin Lewis. I'm an Andy Reid guy. This culture, this morning, I wake up, what do I read? Guy talking about salary demands. This is on, once again, Tomlin's culture. Loosey-goosey, pro player, do what you want. It's immature. I think it's, it could cost him against Jacksonville. So, Big Ben throws five interceptions the last time these two teams played. Yeah. Big Ben threw a horrendous, the worst interception of the year and cost them home field advantage against the Patriots. And somehow, uh, the the Jacksonville Jaguars, if they beat Pittsburgh, Big Ben won't be the number one topic of discussion and people questioning Big Ben. The pressure here is on Big Ben. Tomlin's had a great year. Hmm. So really, so Mike Tomlin, you're totally satisfied that... Tomlin's had a great year. Well, Big Ben had a great December. Yeah. Big Ben's had a better career. This year, though, if this spins out of control, it's on Ben. Tell me. I'm, I'm with you. With, I'm, I'm with you. When I look at what has transpired over this year, and we talk about this weekend, Ben is the one that didn't perform the first time they the first time these two teams met in week five. And we look at Tomlin, what he's what what guys do in the locker room and what they say when reporters ask him questions, he can't control that. But what he can do is, is take all of that and then be productive on Sundays when it counts. And that's what he's done. He's produced wins. Now, when it counts, they both have to come up to the, step up to the plate and hit home runs. How come but no Packers talked? This, that, that's, not their, that's, not, that's not the culture there. Okay, well, who it's starts the, the culture? It starts from the top down. <laughs> but my point is, okay. it has to be echoed throughout your leadership. And Big Ben, he called out the Jags. He said, this is the team. I, I want the Jags. So now, with you saying that, Hey, you got to show up. You're the reason why we really, if you want to be frank about it, you're the reason we lost to him in the first place. Yeah, listen, listen. Both of them. Yeah, I, I get I, that. No, listen, for this reason. Still a nation is one of the greatest traditions, like Green Bay. It's one of the greatest traditions. And the only thing that hides a lot of problem is winning. If they go out and win this week, you'll never hear nothing else about Tommy. You'll never hear nothing else about Le'Veon and all this stuff and whatever. Because when, that's what it takes to win in Pittsburgh. So when we talk about Roethlisberger, the reason why I would lean a little bit to Roethlisberger, because he's on the field. He's, he acts for this same defense that gave him five turnovers. That's like him asking for the Ravens to come back to town. You, Not a good day. When Lavian Bell, when you woke up this morning and read that story, though, that doesn't happen in New England. It, it doesn't happen. A bigger story happens in New exactly. England, actually. Right now. Well, first time ever. <laughs> but, after a billion Super Bowls are wearing each other Well, out. no, it's a lot of but stories that happen. <laughs> what did you think about that Le'Veon story? Le'Veon Bell is a superstar in this league, and he runs his mouth from time to time, and he's he he he's been complaining about his contract for a couple of years. Two days it before doesn't the big... It doesn't surprise me. Uh, why, he ain't putting my... out documentaries <laughs> <laughs> right before the playoffs. <laughs> he, he just said he wants his money. All right, to Minnesota where the Vikings host the Saints Sunday. That's a pretty good line. Four <laughs> Eastern on Fox. Drew Brees has New Orleans back in the playoffs for the first time in four years. But his showdown with Case Keenum might actually be less of a mismatch 
than it seems, with a career year from Keenum giving him almost identical numbers to Breeze, the future Hall of Famer across the board. All right, Whitlock, crazy to think that Case Keenum could outduel Drew Brees. No, it's not crazy to think at all. Case Keenum has had a remarkable season. He's been on a roll. He's been perfect for this team. Case Keenum, uh, again, this year, to me, uh, has been an ideal quarterback for this team, and I expect a week off. I do expect him to outplay uh, Drew Brees. Uh, he'll have a little bit more support. I think he's got a better defense. But, but I see a lot of similarities. I, Case Keenum certainly doesn't have Drew Brees' resume, but I see a lot of similarity between Case and Drew Brees. They're risk takers. They're a bit undersized. They can throw the interception that will hurt you, but both of them have the courage to, to make the high-risk throw and make the big play. I expect Case Keenum to play well, and I'll play Drew Brees. Uh, here's th what's going to happen in this football game. The numbers don't lie. Minnesota, you can't pick up. You cannot convert third downs to first downs against Minnesota. It's happened 51 times this year. Right. That's it. In every game, <clears throat> Drew Brees will not convert third downs. Conversely, because they're beat up and tired in a tough division, Cam Newton converted third downs all day against New Orleans. They've lost A.J. Klein. They've li they're beat up in the secondary. This game's going to be third down driven. And Case is going to pick those. He's going to convert it, and, and Drew's not. So, hold on, hold on. Yesterday, so you're telling me the all-time great Drew Brees, yeah. who you <laughs> top five Thank quarterback, you. he's going out, to get outplayed by Case No, Keenum. he's facing a historically good defense. He's an all-time great, Colin, according to you. Well, so is Aaron Rodgers. He blew games in Seattle. It's hard to win in Seattle. It's hard it's, to win against great defense. When we talk, when we answer this question, it's it's clearly can he outdo Drew Brees, Case Keenum? Absolutely. Yeah. Why? Because of what you're talking about, defense. Yeah. He has to go up against the he has to go up against the the better defense yeah. across the board, yeah. rushing the ball and, and stopping the run and stopping the pass. They are solid across the board. So when you look at what Case Keenum has to go up against, our is New Orleans a good defense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. But are they Minnesota Vikings defense? No. No. Do they have the depth in the secondary? No. Absolutely not. They have Lattimore. That's the one guy in the secondary. And they have pieces. Then they have Jordan on the on the defensive line. Everybody else is sacked by committee. But he. you look at the... The the new uh, the the Vikings. Minnesota Vikings and their defense they pose problems to Drew Brees across the board. Yeah, so yeah. he has to perform. Yeah, that's kind of where I was going with supporting cast. You talk about you think about what Case Keenum has from a defensive perspective. I mean that makes life really easy for him. Why? Field position is one of the biggest things we used to like giving our quarterbacks. Like we used to put them 40 yards in, 30 yards in. Turnover, you know, these big plays change the game and makes the game easier for quarterbacks. No question. So instead, of Drew, Drew Brees has to go probably 80 yards every time against a very, very physical defense. So it's, if it's I said to you, machine. think about this. The last three times the best quarterback ever, Brady, has met perennial OK Joe Flacco. The last three playoff games, Flacco has nine touchdowns, three picks, and a 98 quarterback rating. Brady has four touchdowns, five picks. Flacco has outdueled Brady because Brady had to face him. Exactly. That's so it. when you face a that's great that's defense. Good. That's just supporting. I wish I had a time machine, though, yesterday, <laughs> because Drew Brees was so flawless He yesterday. was flawless. He, he, not, he has nine I mean, both records. Of he now, you better stop this, man. <laughs> both, both of you he's guys. He's still flawless. <laughs> so he is. No, I'm just saying, he's dealing with a different dynamic defensively. Look at Brady against like, Ray Lewis. He was never the same it's guy. It's not a good day. You it's can't, just you, not a good you day. You guys, the only difference between the Vikings defense, <laughs> time out. Y'all acting like Brady don't have five Super Bowls. <laughs> Ray's got Thank two. Thank you. No, what I'm Brady did something. No, right. what I'm saying, well, again, he won games, but his, you're talking about outdueling. Right. The only difference between the Minnesota Vikings defense this year and the Seahawks, statistically, oh, there is none. The difference is the Seahawks had a nickname. That's it. Legion of Doom, Pete Carroll. Right. This defense, nobody knows Mike Zimmer. They, they don't have any yeah. big names. Statistically, this is the Seahawks defense. Which is why I want to see Drew Brees go against his defense. I, because of his greatness. So, so for me, when I, when I look at Drew Brees, in your defense, I'll jump on. He has the best chance out of the quarterbacks left. Yes. The offense is left. Yes. To beat this Minnesota Vikings team. That yes. I agree with. Completely yes. right. And possibly New England. 
Welcome back, Ray Lewis, Greg Jennings. Let's move to New England, where the Patriots may be favored by a couple of touchdowns in their divisional matchup Saturday with Tennessee, but apparently that hasn't gotten Titans feeling very intimidated. Their safety, Kevin Byard, going right at Tom Brady this week. It's a playoff game, so it's not like it's a preseason where I go out there and be like, oh, it's Brady and I'm chilling. Yeah. It's a playoff game, so I don't really care, yeah. you know what I'm saying, if it was yeah. Joe Montana, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to go out there and win the game, and I want to make him look like Blake Bortles if I can, try to catch a couple of picks. All right, Whitlock, a scale one to ten. Is that dumb, foolish? It's, it's like he doesn't know who he's playing. It's, and he doesn't even recognize the situation. The, the, the Patriots got a little internal friction going on. Leave Brady alone. Why poke the bear? On a scale of one to ten, I would call this a nine and a half or a ten in terms of stupidity. You know this man is driven. You know he he looks for motivation anywhere he can get it because when you got five Super Bowl rings, it's hard. And wh why give him any? It's crazy, and I guarantee we're gonna see an insane, obsessed Tom Brady. That, that he he will have words with this dude at some point in the fourth quarter, and he'll point <laughs> to the scoreboard and say, "Now what?" <laughs> See, I my takeaway is Brady doesn't know his name. He thinks of him as number thirty-one on tape. But if you ask Tom Brady who Ke Kevin Barrett is, he'd be like, I, "I don't know who you're talking about." I don't even think this guy. I don't even think Brady. It will have no meaning. He doesn't know his name now. Brady knew Ed Reed, and he knew Troy. And, and those he, guys are smart enough not to open their mouth <laughs> and, and handle it on the field. You think this will tick Brady off? Yes. He looks for this. He's on the hunt <laughs> constantly. Somebody say my name. It, it, he's, you didn't watch The Wire, but he's like Marlo. My name was in the streets. He going to do something about it. <laughs> Y'all need, need to stop this. Jim, I, they need to stop this. This is it's foolish because it's he's talking about Tom Brady. But I love it. I absolutely 100 Absolutely. Love it. Thank you. Absolutely wow. Love it. And the reason why I like it. Y'all better be stop. Because <laughs> when you think about this to. Tennessee Titans team, you, what do they have to lose? <laughs> You talked about it. They, they shouldn't be in the playoffs. They, no. They're the worst team in the playoffs. Easily. They have absolutely nothing to lose. And when he was asked about this, he said, I mean, I mean, win or go home. So I don't care who he is. I don't care who we playing. I'm trying to make him look like Blake Easy to Portals. talk that. Man, it like, is easy to talk it that. It is. But he has to say something. You can't just surrender just Were because. Were you talking trash before playoffs? You know, a young lion ain't walking across that stair and get it quiet. <laughs> he roared. I'm on my way. What else you going to do? The ball still, the, the ball, the, the game still has to be played. Did what do you, you want? talk trash? Absolutely. When we was younger and when we weren't winning. Yeah, I mean, so was he supposed to say, man, this is going to be hard. We're going to play the greatest quarterback of all time. I mean, this is going to be impossible to go up and win this playoff game. Ray, he simply told, said, he, I, I, and I said this, and I said this yesterday. I said, now, you said, you said what you said. Yesterday was Thursday when I said this. Now today is Friday. If you ain't clicking on that button to watch and film, to beat that one, that's, the, that's one of the greatest science masters you can ever play against. So he can talk all he want to talk, but now he's still got <clears> to <throat> sit down and understand. Brady's going to find your greatest weakness. That's what makes him so dominant. Ray, yeah. you, you said either on camera or just on stage and told a story about a running back that let your name fall up out of his mouth and you cracked his... It didn't end well. But that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> who was it? it was, that's my oh, job, man. Remember, who was Y'all got to stop this, man. It, Rashad Mendenhall. Yeah. Don't you do this. That's a totally different conversation. Look. This is what he said. This is what he said. He said, a reporter asked him, what do you think about Ray Lewis? He said, well, I've seen him on film, and I'm not impressed. Really? Hey, that well, was his feelings. That was what, what you yeah. expect him to say. But what, what did Ray do? To, Ray. What you expect? What if Ray it took him out? I didn't I, I take that man out. out. I did my job. I have a job. You when, a running, when a running back fills the hole, I have a free run to say I don't think that's gonna happen. And I don't today. think, I don't think <laughs> either. I don't think either one of us is saying that Tom Brady won't attack him, right. and take advantage of it, and make sure that he let him know that. You don't ever disrespect me like that. Yeah, he may do it, but if I'm Kevin Byer, if I'm on that Titans team, I got to step up now. Now, if he comes in this game and he makes plays, they still lose, we still going to say, well, I mean, I, I he did something. I made a statement, 1993. 
at the University of Miami. I started my first game as a freshman against Colorado Buffalo. I had 19 tackles, Rashawn Salam, Cordelia Stewart, Michael Johnson, Charles Westbrook, all these guys, yeah. Christian Fourier, all these guys, fully loaded. I go out there, Keith Jackson raving. And after the game, I say a, a statement that I may be the greatest hurricane to ever walk up out of here. And I was, I mean, this guy is cocky, he's this, he's that. Michael Irvin called me and said, that's hurricane football. All I'm saying to K, KB, buy it. If you're going to do it, back it up. If you're going to do it, study enough. Because the person you're going up there to play, he heard it. He heard it. Just like you told me. When, when Rashad Mendenhall told me, I put that same article in my locker. Okay. We got to play the game. We'll see. I mean, you, you got him a little bit. No, I mean, he, it he was, put him out. I mean, he it was, he was stop that. Was I did support, my job. It was a supporting cat. <laughs> I got kids, man. I'm, I'm not a mean guy. <laughs> yes, you I are. Just, listen, I think, again, Brady's teetering. There's stats to say he's slowing down his last five games this year. I, I, I think there was a little friction in the locker room, he and Belichick and all this. Stuff. I just think this is a mistake. They've handed Brady something some extra motivation that he will use, and I'm expecting Tom Brady to have a classic game and to, to re, uh, 13 and a half. They, they don't have enough points Titans to cover to shock the what New England's going to do. You know what? Titans going to shock the world. You know the hell with it. Y'all go. It's a huge weekend in the NFL, so we've got some picks. Not quite the blazing five, but let's start in Philadelphia. We're calling. You're taking Nick Foles and the Eagles plus three over the Falcons. Explain. Getting a field goal, weather's going to be lousy. I think Atlanta's exhausted. They've been on the road for the last five weeks. Love Matt Ryan. Falcons get it done. I'm taking the uh, Falcons minus three. To Minnesota, where you're taking my guy Case Keenum and the Vikings minus five over the Saints. Why? Minnesota, I think, is the best roster in the National Football League. You cannot get a convert third downs against them. I think Drew Brees sat on the field and uh, watched that game last weekend, he won with 22 minutes of time of possession. I think he's going to sit and watch most of this game. The Saints aren't going to get the ball back. Five's too big, though. Drew Brees will have a backdoor cover. Minnesota wins by three. They win, but they don't cover. All right, to Pittsburgh, where you like the Steelers, minus seven and a half yeah. over the Jaguars. I would like Pittsburgh a lot more if it was minus seven. Mm. Uh, this, is a, this is one of those Vegas tricks. Seven and a half, I'd pass on it. Seven, I like Pittsburgh. But I do think uh, Juju Smith-Schuster has emerged as another star weapon. They have Le'Veon, Antonio, Juju Smith-Schuster, Big Ben. Matadius Bryant's not even terrible. They're loaded. I, I just don't like Pittsburgh on a big number. I, they don't take care of business all the time. Pittsburgh will win this game by three to five points, but no way they cover the seven and a half, in my opinion. And then finally to Foxborough. When you're taking the Patriots, like everybody, every other smart person in America, minus 13 and a half. When, it, when it comes to playoff games, they cover these big numbers. I know it's a big number, but is Tennessee one of the worst playoff teams in recent years? This, I don't know how they beat Kansas City. I this don't. This number is so wrong. The Patriots win by 26. The number's 13 and a half. They may win by 27. They may double the spread here. This number's wrong. All right, welcome back. We're joined now by Fox NBA analyst Chris Broussard and birthday boy, 19-year-old Jason <laughs> McIntyre of the big lead. All right, let's move to Toronto, where the Cavs got embarrassed for the second straight game, losing by 34 to a Raptors team that was without Ky Kyle Lowry and Serge Ibaka. LeBron went off on his team during the game, and he didn't let up once the game was over. No, just, listen, we all got to be accountable, you know, for our actions, accountable for how well we play and how we play how hard we play, what we're doing for one another, and uh, just some plays, you know, that we should, you know, that you should come up with, you know, you should make, you know, when you're losing, you know, you tend to not want to make those plays or tend to let some plays get away from you, and we can't afford that right now the way we're playing ball, so, um, you know, just trying to hold everybody accountable and, you know, and, and move on, which we did. Last night was the second worst regular season loss LeBron has ever experienced, and combined with a 28-point loss to Minnesota on Monday, this has been the worst two-game stretch of LeBron's career. Oof. Cal Hurd, these blowout losses are a big deal. Or are you going to defend your boy LeBron? <laughs> Last... I'm sorry. Big deal or no deal? I'm sorry. No deal. 
first of all, <laughs> last year, on one year ago today, they lost to Portland by 16, and their next game they lost by 33. They had a losing record last January, had a losing record <clears throat> post-All-Star game, and we were saying the exact same things. This year, they have Jay Crowder and Isaiah Thomas, and they're experienced, and the East is maybe weaker, unless you think, uh, you know, C.J. Miles in Toronto were a real threat. I mean, I look at this and I say to myself, seven straight years I've argued regular seasons don't matter for LeBron. I'm on a seven-year winning streak. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me why I should care about this. Did we, did we play the video of LeBron snapping? Did, well, did we, well, did we have that video? Well, there's never been video of LeBron no, no, no. yelling at well, teammates. Uh, He's been doing that his whole career. No, no, no. But, but I'm saying LeBron clearly thinks it's a big deal. Well, in the moment of a game, Brady snaps at an offensive coordinator. So. Kyle Lowry, no Serge Ibaka, and you get get trounced and you're sitting here to back to back games and you're sitting here to no deal and LeBron's melting down and you're telling no deal this is nothing my wife LeBron? and I get in fights I've never loved her more <laughs> if you had the video of the fight you'd be like yes, look hey, at Cowherd right. exactly oh my right. god that guy never been more in love if LeBron, yesterday LeBron was bored, does he look bored right there? Does he look bored? No, here's he looks frustrated. Here's concerned. what that was about. I talked to some people in Cleveland. Here's what that was about. Phil Handy, who's that assistant coach who was arguing with LeBron, he went at LeBron about being accountable for his defense. Because LeBron has a tendency to call out his teammates for their defensive lapses. And Phil Handy felt like, but you're not taking responsibility for your defensive lapses. So that's what that was about. Otherwise, I'm on board with Colin. I feel like it's Groundhog Day. I mean, seriously, the last three years that LeBron has been in Cleveland, every year it's a train wreck. <laughs> David Blatt, Kevin Love, fit in or fit out. Kyrie Irving, you know, I mean, last year they played 500 balls the last three months of the season. Every single year, at least twice a year, there is drama with LeBron and the Cavs. Yeah, and then dodging, they go to the finals. Can't keep dodging bullets. Just because he's dodging well, he's the ball. They didn't so dodge it last year. They went, what'd they go, 12-1? 12 12 and one. And one. That's not dodging a bullet. That's a freaking <laughs> slamming okay. somebody. All right, all right. That all yourself. makes good go sense. Go ahead and all tell right. us how to sell So the you guys remember the Cavs had won 18 of 19, right? They were super hot in December. They go into that Christmas Day game against the Warriors. And no Steph Curry. And what happens? LeBron fades down the stretch, gets outplayed by Durant. And I believe that game triggered what's going on here. Though. They've lost six of eight since that. I think the Warriors got in LeBron's head. I think he is... Uh, this is I, I think LeBron is a little scared of the Warriors. Oh my we gosh. faced them without Steph Curry and we could not beat them. Now we get Isaiah Thomas back. We're getting pistol whipped by the by the Timberwolves. Like We're getting that. absolutely like destroyed <laughs> you know, you in do not Toronto. That. No, no, Chris, hold on, Chris. Just just think getting about this for whipped a second. Four one in the finals okay. didn't scare me. Chris, him. let me Be remind you. Regular season it's not just the him. losses. He was barking at referees. Remember? Oh, I'm not getting the calls. In the, the media, the media, LeBron took shots at the media last night. Oh, if you were on our team, we would have got beat worse. That was in then fun, in, in I know, jest. okay, in Utah, <laughs> he took shots at the media as well, laughing at their questions. I think the Warriors got in LeBron's head on Christmas Day, and he's in a funk right now, let and me, I don't think he's let out me help. It. Let me help him out here. Let me help him out here where, where I think you guys are missing the boat. Previously, when LeBron's had these dramatic uh, regular seasons, there's been a Chris Bosh and a Dwayne Wade players in their prime to help him right those ships. Previously, Kyrie Irving was there in Cleveland and could pick up the pieces if LeBron fell down. Th there's a much larger gap between LeBron and whoever the second best player is on Cleveland's team than at any time during this phenomenal stretch for LeBron James. There's no one to cover up for LeBron slippage when it happens, and that's probably why the assistant coach Handy is trying to hold LeBron accountable because, again, he doesn't have a Wade or a Kyrie or any of this. So I, I just think I, I agree with you all in terms of he does live in turmoil constantly in the regular season. Much of it he starts. Yeah, yeah. and, and, Colin, and those, the ship. those fights with your wife, you get in one one year. Okay, it's fine. You get in another one the next year. How many years in a row can you get in these nasty, knock exactly. down, drag out <laughs> arguments? <laughs> okay. They've been married 50 yeah, they, and they get in years. Okay. Last <laughs> point. Fight every year. You're, you're <laughs> savior, every Chris. You're, you're Cleveland Cavaliers savior, Isaiah Thomas. It's only been four games, shooting 35%, 26% from three. Looks like the all-NBA player he was last year. 
year. Let, let me throw this theory. I used Gordon Ramsay today, the hot-tempered chef. Some people have overpowering personalities. You've watched that Gordon Ramsay show. He comes in, the chef, the other chef has resistance. It gets ugly. The other chef finally relents, and the restaurant gets turned around. This is what happens with LeBron when he meets a guard that's ball-centric, Wade, Kyrie, or Van IT. Sure. He comes, and it's shocking. It's overwhelming. What? I don't have the ball. And then it gets ugly into the agenda stage. This has happened for all of them. Then eventually Kyrie Wade and Isaiah Thomas relent. He is the better player. And then about game 15, 18, 19, they start winning. This is the stage that Wade, Kyrie, and now IT are going through. These ball-centric point guards inherit LeBron. He's overwhelming. He, he is the most talked about, discussed, biggest, strongest, and he wants the ball. Let me tell you something. You've made a hell of a point. Why you dirtied it up with the chef thing, I have no <laughs> idea. A scripted no, television that, show. That was good. Was a... Let me add one thing to it. Let me add one layer to that. So he would have the <laughs> issue with Wade, right? And then they would work it out. And the next year, after they lost the first year in the finals, they won the title. They've got 40 games to figure this out, Colin. That's it, 40, and then LeBron's a free agent. Are they going to figure it out in the next 40 games? You're that confident? They'll, they'll figure it out. Because there is no next year. They, they, look, there's two things for the Cavs. Win the East and then try to win the finals. If you're asking me, do I think they can beat Golden State? No. But if you're asking me, do I think they can beat Boston and Toronto and Washington and all Le Yes. Okay. LeBron's biggest concern in April is his tax return. <laughs> He's going to march this through guy. April. <laughs> you know I predicted this. That was pretty this. good. So you, you do re I predicted this on all our shows. Before Isaiah Thomas got back, I said, there's going to be a swoon. You did. It's going to be an adjustment. They got a tough schedule, five straight road games. They're going to lose some, and people like McIntyre will panic and say <laughs> they're no good. <laughs>